Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming to the session and sticking it out through the entire day. I know the, everybody's got to be pretty tired by now, uh, four o'clock session. My name's Kyle Gupton. Uh, I'm a director of product management at Tableau, and I work uh, primarily with our customers uh, in the public sector, healthcare, and financial services markets. And so I end up doing a lot of work on the development team uh, to make sure that we know the needs of customers in those markets um, with regard to requirements uh, for the product, things that are unique. Because of that, I also get involved in a lot of the other legal type things like GDPR and the California privacy law and so forth. And so that's why I am here presenting. Um, and I have a couple questions uh, to start before we get more into the content. Uh, so first, were any of you here last year for this session? One, okay, cool. It's gonna be really similar. It's not the same, but it's really similar. All right, uh, second, how many of you are using Tableau Online? Okay, handful of you are, good. So I have content that talks both about Tableau Online and Tableau Server uh, in relation to uh, the requirements of GDPR. Um, additionally, uh, the California law is coming up, and I probably should have changed the name of this presentation, but didn't do so. Uh, you can think of the California law that takes effect in January um, as kind of GDPR light. So pretty much everything I'm saying in here also applies to the California law. You know, more or less, if you're good to go with GDPR, you should be good to go with, with the California law as well. Before I get started, there are a couple of other sessions. Um, these have both already happened, but when you have access to the session recordings, there are a couple of others um, that would be useful uh, for dealing with the issues that we're talking about here. Um, one is Tableau Server Security in Depth, um, because security is a big part of the requirements of these laws. Uh, and then the second one is about the new Tableau Catalog capabilities, because that starts offering some additional tools uh, for managing data and understanding where data is used inside of the system. So today I'm gonna start by kind of giving an overview of the basics of the law um, to make sure that we're all on the same page about um, you know, what its high level requirements are uh, and why I'm talking about the specific subjects I'm talking about. Then we're gonna get into how do you fulfill your responsibilities under that law when analyzing data sources that contain personal data in either Tableau Server or Tableau Online or Tableau Desktop for that matter. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of resources um, to send you home with, or when you actually get this slide deck, uh, links to all sorts of documentation and white papers and the law and all of that as well. Okay, so I am gonna give a big giant disclaimer. Um, before this, this is always tricky talking about legal issues. I am not an attorney. Um, I kind of am interested in it, but I'm not an attorney. I'm an engineer by trade. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, second is interpretations of the laws vary widely. Um, the law is new. Uh, there have not been a whole lot of court cases involving GDPR yet. And so really the specific requirements um, are gonna kind of come out in time, um, kind of what the, the accepted standards of the behavior of companies with personal data. Um, the law is, I think the English version of the law is like 83 pages long and it's a large sleep sweeping law and it's pretty high level. So anytime you hear someone come along and say GDPR requires that you do exactly this within this amount of days, they probably don't know what they're talking about because there are lots of phrases in there about like, you know, reasonable length of time and all of that sort of thing. Um, and so it's kind of difficult to, to know the specifics of what the law requires uh, and that the way these things work, that should kind of become clearer over time as there are court cases and so forth. What I'm personally hoping is that standards will develop by standards bodies like ISO and such that will help direct um, companies on good ways to comply with these laws. I'm hoping that's where things will go in the future, but that's not at all where things are right now. Um, so the presentation also is based on our Tableau's current understanding of the law. That understanding may change, again, as things become clearer in the future. Um, so I'm really presenting our view um, in or, uh, conjunction with our legal team of what we think is import the important considerations under the law. Um, this is not legal advice, and recommend working with actual legal personnel to figure out what your stance is. 
And in particular, um, you know, one thing that underlies the entire subject is that it's your organizations that need to decide what complying with GDPR means for you or the California law. Um, like, what are your you know, various standards for how you're managing data, how you're controlling data, and so forth. And what our job here is to make sure that you have all of the levers in our platform to basically implement your company's policy with regard to how you're managing data to comply with the law. And so a lot of what the presentation is, is about what happens to the data when you put it in the Tableau. Where does it go? What copies are made? How can you keep track of it? Because a lot of complying with GDPR is about keeping track of personal data as it flows throughout your organization. OK. That said, let's get into the basics. Um, so basically, GDPR is a new law, new-ish law. It's about a year and a half old now. Um, came out May 25th of 2018 is when it took effect officially, finally. Uh, and it basically establishes a whole bunch of new um, regulations and requirements and responsibilities for anyone who is doing business with individuals in the European Union. Um, you don't have to be an EU citizen, you just have to be kind of in the European Union and the law covers your data, um, any kind of personal data about you. And what it gives is there's responsibilities for the organizations that collect data and the individual who has, the individual whose data it is has a number of new rights um, by virtue of giving that data up. And so it's particularly concerned with what is called personal data um, other people in other frameworks will call it PII or personally identifiable information. Um, GDPR calls it personal data. And it's basically any data that can tie back to a specific living person. And that can be a person's name, a telephone number, like a social security number, or a driver's license number, an email address, um, or it could be collections of facts that can be used to identify a person. So, for example, if you, you know, have some facts about me, like my address, my gender, et cetera, um, you could figure out who I am, even if I'm not specifically named there. So a collection of facts can also be considered personal data if you can get down to an individual person. Um, and then also things like IP addresses. Um, if, again, that IP address can get tied back to an individual person using a computer, uh, which can sometimes be happen and sometimes not. Um, so that's the kind of data we're talking about here. And so typically it's, you know, customer data. You know, in, the, in business you've got data on your customers. Uh, that's like probably the biggest use case for, for all of this um, is, you know, customer databases and anything that you've collected in order to be able to do business with your customers. That typically is the largest source of personal data that you're dealing with. Would you say that that encompasses your situations that you're dealing with? Yeah, more or less? All right, cool. All right, so some of the elements. Um, so one is you've basically got strengthened personal privacy rights for individuals uh, in terms of what can be done with the data, um, how companies have to tell what's being done with the data that they're asking for for someone. Uh, and it also requires increased responsibility for the protection of the data. I know that there's a lot a lot gets talked about in terms of like the right to erasure or the right to be forgotten um, gets talked about, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but really, probably the, mo the single most important thing about GDPR is if you've got data on someone, it's your responsibility to keep it safe and secure. That's like the real kind of meat of it. Um, in terms of making sure that that data doesn't get out there or if there are hacks or so forth. And there are some pretty stiff penalties um, if you are found in violation of GDPR. It's a, you know, some percentage, I can't remember, 5% or something of annual revenue. I'm sorry? 4% of annual revenue um, of a company, which, wow, that could be huge. Um, that could be a pretty big uh, fine um, for someone. There's also mandatory reporting of breaches of the data. So you can't hide that there was a data breach under the law. You have to um, publicly announce that data breach and I, you know, tell the people involved about it within a certain amount of time. There are rules for transferring data um, outside of the European Union. Uh, and individuals do have a right to request removal of their data from your systems. That's the thing that gets talked about most often. 
So in terms of, uh, there are some definitions that are used in the GDPR. We already talked about what personal data is. You don't need to try to read this. Um, but there are, uh, there's another one called controller. Uh, so they, GDPR talks about basically controllers and processors. So a controller is the organization or individual that is actually requesting access to data and is deciding what to do with that data and how that data is used. So for example, um, you all are in our customer database um, because you're customers of ours, you're attending our conference. We are the controller of that data uh, in, that, in that sense. Tableau is the controller of that data. There's also a notion called processing. Processing is the actual, you know, like storage, transmission, all of those things, you know, what you're actually doing with that data electronically. Um, that's called processing, and the organization or the individual that does the processing is called the processor. And so you might, for example, have a situation where, you know, like, we use, I don't know what uh, tool we use for our customer database, but I think it's a cloud tool. You know, we're the controller of that, but our cloud service provider who we pay to store that data and so they're the processor of that data. And all of these parties have various responsibilities. Um, it's not just the responsibility of the controller, it's not just the responsibility of the processor, it's a mixed set of responsibilities. And that's relevant um, if you are using Tableau online, because in some of those cases, we are the processor of the data. So if you're putting your customer data in a Tableau extract that's stored in Tableau online, we're the processor for it, which means we have the responsibility to keep it safe and secure. Okay, so let's talk about that a little more. So like I said, depending on your use of the products, and this is specifically relevant if you're a customer of Tableau online, the responsibility for complying with the law is shared between us and you in terms of, you know, the data is in our systems, therefore we are responsible um, for keeping it safe and secure. So there's really four steps that you have to go through. You can, you can kind of break this down into kind of four big things that you need to think about when planning your, your GDPR um, compliance project. Uh, first, you need to make sure that you can identify all of the personal data that you have. This is often the most difficult part, um, especially if you have worked in an environment which is tr traditionally very ungoverned in terms of how data is used throughout the organization and so forth. Next, you need to make sure that that data is secure that you're following all of the security best practices around that data. So it's not floating around, it's not you know, laying around and easily hacked. You need to be able to govern access to that data and how that data is used uh, to make sure that you can't you know, copy data when you shouldn't be able to copy data or print out the data or what have you. You need to be able to govern access to it. And you also need to be able to facilitate the rights of the data subjects. So these are the individuals whose data you have. They have certain rights that they can request of you and you have to be able to fulfill those by law. So let's talk about identification. All right, so a note here, making a visually interesting slide about a subject like this is really difficult. <laughs> and you know, it's part of, the, part of the challenge. So there's a whole bunch of pictures of like documentation and documents and other things. They're all actually live links. And so when you get the slides in PDF form after the, the conference is over, um, I hope it to be a useful tool to collect you know, information about how to deal with this subject. So that's my attempt to make a visually interesting slide. So in the Tableau ecosystem, um, personal data can take two forms. So the first and the biggest really is personal data that comes from a data source. So you've pointed Tableau at some file or database or something, and you've brought that data into the Tableau world. What happens to it? Where does it go? What happens to it? So that's the first biggest source. The second biggest source of personal data is in the user accounts on our sharing platforms. So this would be server, online, or Tableau public. So there are personal pieces of personal data that are part of the user accounts. And so I'm gonna address both and kind of how to deal with it uh, next. So personal data and data sources. So obviously if you've 
um, hooked up Tableau to a database and you brought people's names and phone numbers and such into Tableau for analysis um, or presentation and reporting, you've dealt with person, you've got personal data in there. And so you need to make sure that you know what all of that data is uh, in Tableau. So you need to, you know, in general, you kind of have to tighten up your use of data a lot in order to comply with these laws and make sure that you're keeping track of that data. So we do have some uh, initial tools. You can search you know, within Tableau workbooks and data sources in order to find fields. But probably most useful is our new Tableau catalog product, which you saw yesterday morning that was released as part of 2019.3, uh, the data management add-on. So the Tableau, Tableau catalog product allows you to uh, basically keep track of all of the external assets that are connected to from your Tableau server or Tableau online account. So these are all your databases, your files, et cetera. And it gives you an overview of what all the tables in those data sources are, what the fields in those data sources are, where those fields and tables are used, um, you know, which workbooks, and how everything flows downstream from there. And the catalog is a great way to start keeping track of that. Currently, um, there are description fields. You know, when you create a data source in Tableau, you can have a description field and you can you know, put keywords in there to indicate, ah, this field contains personal data. In the future, we're gonna be adding the ability to tag um, individual fields with user-defined user tags, and that'll be an even better way to tag whether a particular data field has personal data in it. And the advantage that you get is there's two things. Is one, in the search capabilities of Tableau Server Online, all of that metadata, including the description, is used to populate the search results when you're searching. So if you use a consistent tag that says, you know, personal data, and then you search for personal data, um, you're gonna get a list that contains all the data sources that have um, fields that have been tagged or have descriptions that contain that phrase. So that's gonna be a really useful thing uh, in terms of that. The second is that Tableau Catalog also comes with what's called a metadata API. So you can write a program using Python or scripting language of choice to basically query the graph of all of this data, graph in terms of data structures, query the graph of all of this data to find where that personal data is used. And so this is really, and this is new from last year, we didn't have this, and so this is a big step forward in terms of being able to keep track of the data that's used in the Tableau system. And we have other ideas for you know, potentially actually having a, a specific personal data checkbox, um, you know, not just a generic tag, but something specific to it that we could then start to build additional features around once it becomes clearer how people are needing to manage this in, in the product. Right now, I think we're still at a pretty early stage. Um, you know, we can't tell you how to, you know, what your data strategy needs to be. We can support that. Um, and, but as it becomes clearer and best practices become you know, normalized across the industry, we can start adding more and more to our products to make that easier. Okay, any questions about that? The personal data and the data sources. Okay, so the next place, and this is key that it's gonna end up, so you've got the data from the data sources, it's flowed into the Tableau system. There's a few places it can end up. So one, probably the most obvious, is if you extract data from into a Tableau extract. You've just made a copy of the personal data, and now you have a file either on a disk drive somewhere or in your server that has a copy of that personal data. You need to know about that. The same is true if you ever export or download the data. So if you download the data as a, you know, Excel spreadsheet or CSV file, you now have another copy of the data. So you need to keep track of that. And we'll talk about, you know, there are ways that you can prevent users from doing that. You know, there are permissions and all those sorts of things that basically say, no, users can't download that data. So you can prevent that from happening. And then there are some other places that you might not remember is, you know, Tableau has a number of different packaged file types. So these are the TwibX, the package, you know, packaged workbook, packaged data source, and packaged flow files for Tableau prep. So if you are using an extract or a file-based data source like an Excel spreadsheet as the data source and you export a packaged workbook, you've created a copy of the data is now inside of that packaged file. 
So you've created another copy of the data that you have to keep track of. And then things that you might not think about at all are caches. So our products do a bunch of caching, meaning we hold data around um, so we can have better performance when people are loading up views in Tableau Server or online. And there are a number of different ways that we cache this data. Um, and so copies of that data can end up in these caches. And you do have some control over cleaning out these caches, how long that data is kept around, and so forth. But that's another place that you need to be aware of. And this is, I think, where you start getting into, like, how far do you go? You know, how far do you go with this GDPR stuff? You know, obviously, you know, you want to keep your main customer database or whatever it is clean. And you want to make sure that those changes propagate down into any extracts. Do you really need to worry about data that's, you know, temporarily stored in a cache? I don't know. It depends on kind of what your lawyers want to do with it. Um, maybe, maybe not. You know, in general, these sorts of things are transient. You know, they don't live forever. And a lot of the language of GDPR is about, you know, you need to remove things within a reasonable amount of time. And usually it just goes away on its own after some amount of time. That's how these things work. Um, but it's, it's important to be aware, and that's a big part of what this presentation is, is telling you all this stuff so you know where all these copies get made. Because it's not obvious when you just think about it on the surface. Okay. Yeah, and like some of the caches as well, like um, one of the other places, there's something that's called cache warming. So if you have a scheduled extract refresh on your server, and we can go in and pre-populate commonly used views with the new data from a scheduled extract so that when someone hits that view for the first time, they don't actually have to do the query. It, it loads it up faster. It's called cache warming. And that's something, it's configurable whether you do this or not. Um, but these are the kinds of things that you can control and stuff that Tableau Server is doing behind the scenes. Okay, so talking about um, personal data in user accounts. So again, user accounts on all of our systems contain personal data as well. Things like an individual's name, if you type it in, an email address to contact them with, all of those sorts of things are contained in there. Other things that are contained in there is there is historical logging of user actions on these systems that's done. So like on Tableau Server, for example, um, there is an internal Postgres database that contains a bunch of information, including historical logs of the activities of users. And you can find out what user opened which view, how long they were active, when they logged in. All of those things are considered, are, are logged as part of the historical records of the server. Um, it's configurable, what, how detailed that is, or whether it's logged at all, how long those logs stick around, et cetera. We'll talk more about how you configure that, but it's there. Um, and that is considered personal data as well. Now, realistically, this is not typically the kind of personal data that people worry about. Mostly people worry about, you know, consumer data. You know, this is like personal data of an employee of your company and their account on Tableau Server. Yes, it does qualify as personal data, but it's typically not the kind that is the target of these sorts of laws. But we have had an interesting request for deleting personal data from Tableau Online once. We've only gotten one request to do that um, so far. And it was specifically related to their activity on Tableau Online. Okay. So... So now we've, we've talked about identifying. So we've kind of gone through all the places where personal data ends up. You've brought it in. Copies might be made in terms of extracts or exports. Uh, if you've uh, created packaged files, copies might end up there as well. And there are caches. That's all the places where personal data can end up and be copied to. So it's good to know that. Uh, the second big step is to make sure that that personal data is secure. And this means following security best practices in your Tableau server um, administration. Tableau Online, that becomes our responsibility to provide, to do uh, security best practices. This is not a security session, so I'm not going to get into what that actually is, but we have resources out there for you. We have a white paper on Tableau server uh, security 
Um, we talk about you know, how to set up the server uh, to be maximally secure. I mentioned the uh, TC talk uh, that you can get as well, where we talk more about best practices for setting up a secure server. Uh, there's a, secure, a server security hardening checklist that's part of our documentation. Uh, recommend going through that and just you know, following all of the, the main best practices there. And then if you're interested in our own security practices um, for our cloud-based products, so this would be online or public, we have a white paper on that as well. Um, so it talks about our practices in terms of how we keep your data secure if you're using one of those platforms. And again, like I said, for online and public, or pub public is actually different because the data is all meant to be public. Um, online is a different story, and that's our responsibility to keep all of that secure. Okay, so governing access to and use of personal data. So a lot of our customers um, work in a you know, kind of wild west of data. You know, anybody can create anything and hook up to any data source and export and everything, and that's awesome. It's, you know, that's the dream of self-service. Unfortunately, it's also the nightmare of someone who's trying to keep track of things like personal data because of laws. Um, and so it's really important that you start thinking through what your strategy is for governance of that data um, in terms of, for example, doing things like uh, having people build visualizations off of published data sources only, you know, not just accessing directly into a database, not logging in, you know, that allows you to control, you know, what the fields are and allows you to keep better track of what's going on. So those are the kinds of governance uh, practices that are useful. There are other things, and in general, what you're trying to do is uh, establish, you know, it's, there's an idea called least privileges. It's a security principle uh, called least privilege, and it basically says, you know, an individual only has access to the things that that individual needs to have access to. So it's not just a, you know, anybody who logs into your server can have access to any piece of data that's there. You know, that's not, that's most privilege. Uh, least privilege is when you restrict access and it's, it's more like access by exception rather than restriction by exception. Uh, and that's kind of a, a general thing because the fewer people have access to data, the fewer points of leakiness that there are in your system of something that could happen to that data. And there are a number of ways that you can deal with this. You know, one is the idea of user-based filtering um, so that only certain users can see certain pieces of data at the row level. And row level security is something that we're actively investing in to give better options for row level security in the Tableau platform. And then of course, the permissions model inside of Tableau. So there is a big complex set of permissions in terms of like site roles, um, groups, individual permissions and so forth. And this is how you configure all of those points that allow you to do things like, you know, can an individual even open a workbook? You know, do they need to have access to that workbook? Because the workbook might have data in it. Um, can an individual export the data from that workbook? Can they download the workbook? Those are all the points where you run into trouble with governing things. You know, one thing to note is that sometimes people say it's like, oh my God, someone saw this information. That's bad. It's not really the fact that someone saw personal data that's the issue. It's what happens to it. You've, it's when you ha a risk losing control of it. You know, they download an Excel file and now they have an Excel file with that data on their desktop. And what if you need to delete something from that? Well, that's really hard to figure out. Um, it's really hard to, to track down all that kind of stuff. There's some really interesting stuff going on as well. Um, like AWS, so Amazon has a, a relatively new uh, capability called Macy, M-A-C-I-E. Um, we have some ideas around it, but basically what it is is it's an AI-based tool for scanning uh, data stored in S3 buckets. And it basically goes through and tries to identify things that could be personal data. And so if you just start dumping all of your data into these S3 buckets, it can start scanning that data and say, hey, you know, this Excel spreadsheet looks like it's got social security numbers in it because it has a, you know, a column that looks like a social security number to us. You know, I think this is, 
something that machines are going to have to do. You know, individuals are not going to be very good at, you know, I couldn't tell you all the data that I have on my computer. Who knows? Um, you know, I might have to search it and use uh, machine tools to find it. But anyway, so the permissions model is, um, and making sure you've set up the permissions well is really key to be able to keep control of the data. Um, and in particular, this is, you know, in terms of like downloading workbooks as well as um, exporting data, downloading the data from the workbooks. Those are things that you can control through user and group permissions. All right. And then getting into facilitating the rights of the data subjects. So this is where it gets a little more complicated, a little more meaty. Uh, and there are basically four rights that data subjects have under the GDPR. So they have uh, what's called the right to access, so they have the right to find out what data you have on them and what that data is. So they have a right to, to that. So someone can, under the GDPR, can send you a written request and say, I want to know what all the data you have on me is. And I would like that data, and that data needs to be given to me in a, what they call a common machine readable format. That's, a, that's called the right to data portability. There's also the right to rectification which is, hey, correct the data you have on me, you have incorrect data on me, and then, of course, the right to erasure. Originally, it was called the right to be forgotten. Um, and this is, please delete all the data that you have on me. That's something that someone can ask. All right, so in terms of the data that we have on all of you, um, we have a privacy policy, and that privacy policy talks about what data we collect, what purposes we use it for, and you know what uh, anybody in the EU can request us to remove that data and exercise those rights with us. And that's detailed in our privacy policy if you're interested. But in terms of the right to access and right to portability, again, your, um, your customers have a right in the, in the European Union, have a right to request of you, and soon to be in California, have a right to request of you what data you have and a copy of that data itself. So um, basically, you know, a, you can use Tableau as your way to facilitate this. You don't have to. You know, there's lots of strategies that you can use around, around these sorts of things. Um, Tableau can be the mechanism that you use to give someone a copy of their data. You know, you can export data in a CSV format. That's a, considered a machine readable format that you could send someone the data in. Um, or you could go back to the original data source and export from there. Kind of up to you uh, which is the way to do it. You know, in general, you should have kind of one master source for your data, and everything flows out of that. So you only have to make changes in one place. Everything you know about a person is contained in one place, and anything else is just downstream and automatically updates. And that's super relevant for um, the right to rectification and right to erasure. So again, a data subject has the right to request updating of the data or erasing of the data. And that's where things can get a little hairy depending on how well you've managed and kept control of all of the data. And so, you know, there are really kind of three things that have to be done there. Because remember where all the change or where all the copies of data can be created. So they can be in extracts and exports, which means you need to update your extracts and your exports. They can be in packaged files, so that means you'd have to recreate the packaged files with the new or deleted data. And then finally, if you really want to get persnickety about it, go through and make sure that you've cleared all the caches in the system. Again, eh, whether you have to do that, uh, who knows? The, the law does not say. So in terms of updating the extracts and exports, you know, exports are tough. You know, if you down, get people to, to allow people to download data, that's, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Um, it's useful, but it's also impossible to control at that point. Um, so that's a, you know, could be a best practice you choose to do is to start restricting people from being able to do that. Extracts, however, are a little easier to manage. So with extracts, you can set up scheduled extract refreshes to constantly go back to the original data source and update the current extract. Now, with, there's two kinds of refreshes that you can do. You can do an incremental refresh or a full refresh. Only full refreshes will delete data in the extract. 
incremental refreshes will just add new data to it. So what you have to do is basically periodically do a full extract refresh. Um, and so like a good practice here is, you know, let's say you have a customer database, it's a SQL server or something like that, and you've you know, hooked up Tableau to that and you're extracting data from it uh, in order for analysis. So what you can do is you know, you're probably going to set up some kind of scheduled extract refresh so that you've got the you know, reasonably fresh data for analysis. Well, also schedule periodically, you know, maybe monthly, quarterly, something like that. Schedule a full extract refresh. That way, any extract that's made from that, you know, will have you know, data deleted you know, at least a month, you know, within a month of it being deleted in the master source. Uh, and that's kind of generally the philosophy for dealing with these things, is to have one master source of your data, and then everything flows from there and gets deleted or updated appropriately. Now, one thing that's new, here's another piece of new information from last year. Uh, in October, we released a new API for hyperdata extracts, because sometimes you lose connection to the data source. Like the data source goes away and you've just got the extract. So you can't refresh your extract anymore. Your extract is kind of orphaned and that happens. So until now, you couldn't really do anything about that except for literally delete the entire extract, which maybe you don't want to do. But now with the Hyper API, you can do full create, read, update, delete, or CRUD operations using SQL on Hyper Extracts. So you can find records in Hyper Extracts, you can modify them, you can delete them all using the new Hyper API. So that's a really important new tool that we've added um, for those situations where it's not possible to do a full extract refresh. Um, and we have many customers who are in that situation. Next is recreating your packaged files. You know, I don't know, how many of you actually even use packaged files much? You know, a handful. Yeah, might want to think about that, depending on, on whether you're, you're dealing with personal data in those files. Um, it's not a bad thing. It just complicates things when there's personal data. You know, that's another thing. You know, we, we've been, as you know, we've been putting a lot of effort into web authoring, and, you know, we're about to have a web-based uh, Tableau prep product, so you can do it all there. You know, one of the great things about web-based, uh, the web-based editing is it allows you to have better control of things, because now everything's stored on the server. You know, there's not something that you've downloaded to your desktop. You don't really create packaged files. It's just you've hooked up to it and it's all managed behind the scenes. So it's a lot easier to create a system that's less leaky uh, in terms of making additional copies of your data that you can't keep track of. All right, uh, clearing of the caches. Again, this starts getting um, maybe a little persnickety. Uh, there are various caches. Tableau Desktop has a cache. Uh, we have some articles on how to clear that out. So, you know, if that's something that you want to be worried about, you can. A good, you know, another good reason why web authoring is because then you avoid having issues like that. Uh, Tableau Server. So Tableau Server, and this is also true for Tableau Online and Tableau Public, the caches in Tableau Server, they clear out about once a week or so. <laughs> you know, it's it's indeterminate how it happens, eventually it happens, but about a week is, is common for these things. And so, you know, most of these issues with the data stored in cache will just resolve themselves in time. That's why I think it's perhaps a little, you know, being a little persnickety to, to think about that, but I just want to be complete. Um, and you can configure um, caching behavior, like I said earlier, and then there are also TSM commands specifically that clear out the cache. So that's something uh, that, is, that is done. It's the cleanup command. Uh, it's a TSM maintenance command. Uh, use, use maintenance commands for backup and restore and those things. And there's a cleanup, and that will clean up these caches as well and delete them all. So um, turning now to if you need to delete personal data in user accounts. Well, so there are a member, another number of kinds of personal data in these user accounts. Um, um, so there's the, the, the main account data, like emails, names, those sorts of things. If you delete someone's account from your Tableau server, that data is thrown away. But there are still historical logs 
of those users' activities that may still be around. And there are ways, again, when you do cleanup on um, the server, that those logs are thrown away. So, and you can also set the logging levels. If you're really concerned about this, you can turn off historical logging. Probably not a good thing to do because it's hard to administer a server when you've not logged historical events. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, these, these things are funny. You know, it's like these requirements are like, you know, there's a lot of tension, <laughs> you know? You wanna log stuff so you can, you know, it, it's, it's funny. So I, I work a lot with cybersecurity type things and like US federal government cybersecurity regulations and the logging requirements are huge. And so like, you wanna log everything because that's the way you go through and investigate potential security breaches is through all of these logs. Of course, all of these logs constitute personal data. So then you've got all these logs or, you know, it's, these things are in tension with each other. It's, it's interesting. Okay, um, again, with our own online products, so online and public, we throw away these historical logs after a period of time. I think it's like 30 days or 90 days or something like that, but we get rid of that information. Okay, how are we? There we go, okay, good. Okay, so that actually is the end of the content that I have. Um, oh, there we go. So GDPR and now California, you know, have these requirements on you. And it's, you know, it's something we can't solve it for you, but we can enable it. And that's what we want to be here for is to provide all the levers and the, the elements of control that you need to execute your organization's strategy for dealing with this. Um, and so, you know, really it's about creating a more governed environment than you might ordinarily have um, so that you can keep track of you know, who has access to things, what they can do with it, can they make copies of it, and then also knowing you know, what happens within Tableau Server um, that you know, might surprise you in terms of where copies are made uh, and make sure that you can set up a good kind of data flow uh, appropriately. So uh, with that, thank you and any questions?